The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Stock Market Authority Podcast. I'm Bakes, Kevin Baker. I'm going to teach you how to make money in up and down markets. Very few podcasters or coaches cover this. I'll show you how to lock in profits and minimize losses to make you a better investor. So once a week, you're going to know what's going on in the world and the stock market. Welcome to the Stock Market Authority Podcast. Good morning, everybody. This is Bakes, Kevin Baker, Stock Market Authority. It is Wednesday, February 1st. And January is in the books, and it's unbelievable to me that uh, time is flying like this. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the, the, the market doesn't care about your opinions and my opinions, and I'm mainly speaking to me about this, uh, frankly. Uh, we're going to open the mailbag. We're going to go to B3, Bakes Back to Basics. Uh, I'll explain moving averages and other the technical things that I've, I've talked about in the past, why I sell, we'll analyze a drug company, and much, much more. And then we'll go through the portfolio, uh, the search for the 10 best ETFs continue, and we're going to make money this year like we did uh, l- last year. I certainly hope so. Uh, today's top story. The market doesn't care, and and this is a, a tough one for for uh, all of us to realize. But uh, uh, it just it was brought home to me by I was I was l- listening to the on the tape podcast, which I really recommend. Guy Adami, uh, uh, Dan Nathan, Danny Moses, uh, and Danny Moses was one of the uh, big short uh, uh, guys that if you if you saw that movie, which is one. Jack and I, we just borrow it every time it comes on. And they had on a recent episode, I've got a link in the notes here, which I really recommend, and I'll spoon feed you to go to 36 minutes, because that's when Porter Collins and Vincent Daniel the, of Big Short fame, um, uh, you know, they shorted the, the, uh, uh, the, the banks and, and the mortgage companies and all those during the real estate crisis back in uh, 07, 08, 09. And... Uh, you know, they made a, I forget which one said it, frankly. I wish I could remember. But he said, you know, I'm going to spend this year not looking at the market, but looking for groups and that are going to make money. And I, that was a great reminder to me because we all kind of get into, I don't know, I won't speak for you, but many of us, you know, the market is doing this. We think it should be doing that. And the market doesn't care. It really doesn't care. Uh, it doesn't care uh, uh, what you think interest rates are doing. They don't care what you think about Powell. It doesn't care that, that you know, you bought a stock and you're down 40%. It, it just doesn't care. You know, and if you want to, uh, uh, you know, it, it is such an unfeeling beast that when John Kennedy was shot, uh, President John Kennedy, obviously, you know, the most arguably one of the most the most traumatic event up to that point in time in American history. Uh, the stock market blinked. I mean, it was down a percent that day, and then it just kept going. They played NFL games that day, and 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 off we went. By the same token, you know, in the '90s when everything felt great, Goldilocks, low inflation, rates low, internet exploding, uh, that was the time to be selling. You know, when, when, when everything feels so great, that's the time to, to go the other way. And, and during COVID is my other example. You know, when thousands of people are dying and we're locked in our homes, the stock market ripped. So uh, it really doesn't care about your opinions and it doesn't care about mine. Now, having said that, I have them and I'm going to share them with you. <laughs> But I just want to couch it as saying that the market is the final arbiter of success. That's the scoreboard. And I never want to think that I'm smarter than the market. I want to be in sync with the market. And so, you know, Tesla's my my, my most recent example. Um, you know, the uh, we were pretty good about this. We called the stock going down from 414 down to 100. You know, we didn't catch it perfectly, but we got a, we, we we talked about this a lot. And I said that we're going to get to a $4 number this year in earnings. It looks like that's happened. Numbers have come down. We've bounced from 100 up to 175, which is where we are right now. And so what I think is that's a big move. It's still down a lot from its high. I think 42 times earnings for a stock where they're already cutting numbers, cutting prices, interest rates are up. 
Elon says demand is fine. I have that. I have a hard time believing that very much. But you know, the market is what the market is. If the market takes us to 200, 300, then so be it. I'm not going to fight it. But uh, I just realized that the, the 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 market doesn't care. It just doesn't care what I think. And so I'm going to be nimble. I'm going to pay attention. But I'm going to be humble. The, the stock market has taken any hubris I had when I walked into Kidder Peabody back in, 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 uh, in uh, uh, March of 87 into the training program and just beat, me, beat that out of me. So, um, uh, you know, what I think is going to happen. Now, today is, is, is the Fed decision day. Powell, uh, you know, the, the Fed is very widely expected to raise interest rates a quarter, uh, 25 basis points, a quarter of a percentage point. Uh, now, the market's up, uh, you know, like in this right now, at least when I, when I looked before we went on air. And what's going to be interesting, so I think it levitates from here, and I think Powell comes on at 2.30 and says, that's great, but we're going to raise uh, interest rates as far as the eye can see. Inflation is at six. That isn't two. When it's at two, we'll stop. And we're going to keep ratcheting up interest rates, making it tougher for stocks to go up as far as the eye can see. Now, uh, that's what I think is going to happen. I'll tell you, you know, we'll look at 230 and see how this, this pans out. And I'm going to be uh, uh, very responsive and attentive to what the market tells me to do. But that's what I see going on right now. But I just want you to... Uh, this isn't personal. It's like uh, Abe Vigoda in in, uh, in Godfather. It's just business, and um, uh, you know. So please, you can have opinions, but you also need to have a discipline. And I think, frankly, most of you don't. And I'm hoping I impart some of my discipline to you, and at least give you a framework to develop your own. So uh, I know the market doesn't care what I think. I still have opinions, and I'm going to uh, you know, focus on what I really do, which is making money every year for you, no matter what the market does. So we'll, we'll see what happens. And that's today's top story. Incoming! There's a letter in your mailbox. <laughs> you got mail. Uh, and this is really great. Uh, this is B3, but my bakes uh, back to basics because I get questions from from uh, a lot of you, and I really encourage you to do this. You know, come to me at bakes at stockmarketauthority.com. Uh, uh, come to me at bakes takes on Twitter and say, you know what, you lost me. I really don't get that. Yeah, what are you talking about? And because I've been doing this for 25 years, and I don't know anything about your business. But I know that I've been staring at charts and screens and, and companies and interviewing managements for all that time, and you haven't. So this is my level of expertise, and, and I hope I, I can be helpful, to, especially Jay from Philly, uh, which, by the way, we, I, we raised our kids in Philadelphia. And uh, you know, I'm a Pats fan it's down to my, my bone marrow, but I'm an Eagles fan in a couple of weeks. So uh, best, of, best of luck to, uh, to the Eagles. And uh, Jay asked about... You know, Bakes, you talk about resistance, you talk about support, you talk about head and shoulders, uh, and, you know, with the 50-day and the 200-day moving average, and, and what really are you talking about? And I hope I can clarify this, and I know that if this is audio only, this is going to be tough. Uh, go to the YouTube channel and go to this section to, to see what we're talking about here, but I'm going to try and make it uh, meaningful for all the folks that are walking the dog and working out and, and uh, are away from the visuals, but if, if I don't have a chart, then I'm kind of uh, kind of lost. So this is what I did. I uh, after going through the '87 crash, yes, that's how old I am. I realized I didn't know what I was doing, and the stock market analysts didn't know what I was doing, and so I went on the jihad and and just read everything. And I found out that the folks that that did well during the stock market crash of '87 were the technicians, the chartists, the technical and an analysts. And so I came across this book, which I mentioned last week. There's another link in the notes uh, this week. How to make money selling stocks short. And what you see here is a page from my very dog-eared version of this. 
This, by the way, is all my mistakes that I, I write down as to uh, where the bodies are buried. Bakes, don't do this again. Don't touch that stove. So this kind of goes into that. But this is, I think, really uh, germane. This is Cisco back in 2000. And I can't tell you how bulletproof Cisco felt back in that time as we were going through the 90s, the internet exploding, server demand going bananas. But then you come to 2000, 2001, and you see this head and shoulders top, okay? Now, what happens is people, you know, love a stock, momentum builds, the buy uh, 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 recommendations pile up on the street, and you have this, this left shoulder. And it goes up on big volume, and everybody is really jacked up. And then the earnings report comes out, eh, it's okay. So then you go to the head, which is B on this, on this chart that you see here. And, but the volume isn't as, as convincing. And it breaks out, but it feels sluggish. It feels tired. And that's what I see when I see these charts. And I'm going to finally, you know, I hope impart that to you. And then you have the right shoulder where eh, the, the volume is, is not only... Uh, bad on the up days, but it picks up on the down days, and it shows that that uh, that people are uh, losing conviction, and the buying power isn't there. And it's just sort of you know the natural flow of things. You get excited about something, and then you get bored, and things change, and you go someplace else. So at around sixty. That was support. Now, what happens is you, you break out above 60, and then 60 becomes uh, this, this memory in the stock market where all those people that said, I really wanted to buy that at 60. It comes down to 60, and it, it, it forms support at that level. And it bounces up and bounces up and, and, and maybe breaks off into new highs, or maybe it doesn't. Well, what happens is I went through this book. And this is about selling stocks short, obviously, from William O'Neill, if I didn't say that before. And what, what I realize is that there's literally dozens of, of examples, and I've seen hundreds and thousands in my experience. The stocks that have big moves up roll over kind of the same way. And it looks like this. And so what I noticed, they didn't talk about it explicitly when they wrote the book. But what happens is you have a close below the 200-day moving average. I've talked about this before. What's a moving average? It's simply the last, you add up the prices of the last 200 days and you divide by 200. And you plot that, which is underneath the, the, the stock price at, of, of a rising stock. And what is it? It's a smoothing mechanism. It shows prevailing trends and, importantly, changes in trends. So when it breaks the 200-day moving average for the first time, what I developed after going through this so many times was I sell a third. Why only a third? Because sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes stocks rip off into new highs, and you don't want to you don't want to have a big winner that you sell entirely. So I came up with this sell a third, and I don't think about it, I don't talk about it, I just I don't call the analyst, I don't call the company, I sell a third of the stock, and you can see that here. That's around sixty on this this Cisco chart back as the as the the dot com bubble was just starting to burst. Then you see the fifty day come down through the two hundred, also around sixty bucks. Sell another third. It just shows that things are weakening. Things could reverse, but it very rarely happens. By the time the 200-day starts rolling over and moving down, you want to be on to something else. And we're seeing that in the portfolio, which we'll talk about later. But you see here at 60, support now becomes resistance. You break it, you should have been out of $60 using my sell discipline, and then it becomes resistance. And so every time that you have all these people that bought up here, they say, oh, thank heavens, I'm break even, I'm going to get out. I'm going to get out. I'm going to get out. And it becomes very difficult for any news to be positive enough to get folks above that $60 level. So 60 bucks then becomes resistance, a lid, a ceiling. You hit it, and then finally it becomes exhausted, and it rolls over. Well, in this case, it rolled over hard to 12. Now, you can do that math, but that's down 80%. And that's why I have this sell discipline that I develop over the course of my career, looking at this and, and why I bring it to you because that's real money. 
And not only does it save you a lot of money, it's psychologically cleansing and freeing to realize I have a discipline. I know exactly what I'm doing. It's imperfect, but I'm going to lock in profits and minimize losses. And as soon as I take the money from Cisco, let's go look at other things to do. Well, back then, when I was a healthcare analyst, it was health. One man gathers what another man spills. All that money from technology and the internet flew into healthcare, and we bought the 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 hospitals and the and the surgical tool companies, and they just went up based on valuations. And so that's why I talk about this the way I do. And I hope I've given you some context. I hope I've clarified technical analysis to an extent. And please come back to me with questions. And maybe I build out a whole course where I really go through this in the nitty gritty. But this is the reason why I'm like this, for better or for worse, and why I uh, uh, sell stocks. And I, and I hope that's been helpful. The next chart shows Cisco today. And here I want to make the point is it's still down. We sold at, six, you know, technically, you know, uh, theoretically at 60 back in, in 2000. Look at this line, which is now resistance after all these years. This is 23 years and the stock is still below that 60 level. So when I hear things like blue chip and buy and hold and Warren Buffett never sell, I go, you're looking at a different market than I am or you're a different human being. And if you're okay from this going from 60 down to eventually eight and being dead money for 23 years, okay, that's fine. But uh, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to sell winners cut losses, and move on to other things. Um, so I hope that's helpful. You tell me if it is. Hank from Nashville came in and asked about terzepatide. I think I'm pronouncing that right. This is the new Lilly weight loss drug. And uh, it's getting a lot of enthusiasm. Apparently the data shows that it can, it can encourage 22% uh, uh, weight loss, which is a big number. Usually, you know, the, the prior drugs that get approved are, you know, 510 uh, bariatric surgery is really the only game in town for this uh, the, to a large extent. Uh, the, uh, but the stock's already expected this. You know, uh, the stock's had a nice run. It trades at a 40 times PE. The other drug companies are, are much, much lower than that. So there's a lot of enthusiasm for this weight loss drug that, 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 that you asked about, Hank. And I'm going to I'll put this out in, in another post later on. The Streetwise podcast with Jack Howe came out a little while ago and interviewed Jeff Meacham, who's a friend of mine, Bank of America analyst. And uh, the title of it was, was the first $100 billion drug. So that's the kind of enthusiasm this is having for people with heart failure, COPD, diabetes, et cetera, where obviously those are co more, you know, ob uh, uh, obesity is, is a comorbidity for a lot of those things. So uh, the reason I bring this up, be really careful. Now, right now, the stock's fine. So I would be a holder at, with what I see right now. But be careful of buy the rumor, sell the news. The approval is virtually certain, especially in the market. So if that doesn't happen, that's a big negative. And what's going to happen is they get approved and then they have scripts, prescriptions, the data that, 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 that's out there. And, they, and they're going to see the analysts on the street are going to track how that goes versus what they expect. And they'll probably lowball it initially. But if that comes in, in in line or disappoints in any way in the first six, nine months, the stock's not going to like it. And at 40 times, you're probably going to say, uh, let's go on to the next thing that, that, that's, that's more promising. So just be careful here that uh, Gilead with their hep C drug went through a similar kind of thing. Uh, watch out that, that the market has bought the rumor and it's going to sell the news when you actually see the drug out there in the marketplace because insurers have a big incentive to say, we're not going to pay for this or we're not going to pay the price that you're asking because it's going to, uh, it's, it's going to uh, uh, drive our costs through the roof. You mentioned IHE, uh, the ETF. J&J &J is, is the uh, number one name there as 20%. J&J &J kind of can't go up much and it can't go down much. It's just an old battleship. And so 
you know, owning J and J for 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 meaningful upside. We used to use it as uh, a way to balance out our other healthcare shorts. So uh, I'm not too wild about that at the, at this point in time. Bill from Baltimore came in and asked about United Rentals. Uh, it's a very good business. You know, if you uh, you need a Bobcat, you need a bulldozer, you need a, a cherry picker, whatever, you rent it from them for for uh, a, a period of time. Clearly, it was beaten down. Expectations were really beaten down. They, uh, uh, it's one of these examples where they missed numbers, but because they're they the expectations were so low, and you had six percent short and six days short, and their guidance was pretty good. They said we're going to take this north. They also uh, issued a new dividend. They put up a billion dollar stock buyback, and you can see what happens here. Uh, that calls into it trades at 13 times, not bad. Looks like it's going to grow 20 percent plus this year. Uh, so I think it's a big winner. I would, th if I owned this, I would then just hold it and wait for my cell discipline to kick in. But uh, the folks at uh, Bear Traps Report put together a pretty plausible case that this could be a uh, 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 you know a final move, an Elliott wave, fifth wave that gets really into the weeds. I won't bore you with all that right now. So uh, it looks extended to me. I think you're okay. Um, I think that the shorts have been squeezed and they're not going to be buying demand going forward. So I would hold it and then I would watch the sell discipline that we just discussed to uh, uh, you know, make your decision to go on to other things. That's it. Um, let's take a break and we'll be right back. Do you want to become a better investor? Do you want to learn how to make money in both up and down markets? Then you need to go to stockmarketauthority.com and sign up for our free newsletter today. Stock Market Authority is run by award-winning investment manager Kevin Bakes Baker. His aim is to save you time while teaching you how to be a better investor. Bakes saves you time by diving into all the latest stock market news and information so that you don't have to. He reads all the latest articles, analyzes the charts, and listens to all the relevant podcasts. And then once a week, he gives you a breakdown of what's happening in the market. Stock Market Authority is constantly outperforming the S&P and the HFRX. Bakes is going to share with you his weekly stock observations. He'll give you concise insights and show you how to lock in profits and minimize losses. Stock Market Authority is making money in up and down markets. Wouldn't you like to do the same? So join now and let Bakes show you how. Head on over to stockmarketauthority.com and sign up for our free newsletter today. That's stockmarketauthority.com, making money in up and down markets. We are back, and today we've been talking about the market doesn't care what you think or what I think. Um, but, of course, I'm going to tell you anyway, because um, you can make money even if the, the market doesn't care. Uh, and to that end, we're going to talk uh, right now about the, uh, the SMA portfolio, Stock Market Authority portfolio. Uh, I listen to podcasts constantly, my competitors and, and, and other folks on the periphery, and I don't see anybody showing actual investments. What are, what are you doing with money and, uh, uh, you know, where have you put your money where your mouth is? This is a real account uh, that I run with for my wife. Uh, we have a retirement fund with S&P, and then this is what we do to make money every single year when the S&P is down. I just think that makes sense. I have fun with it, and it's uh, – I, I hope it makes sense to you for a portion of, of, of your portfolio and you decide how much that is. So here's the portfolio. Again, there's more green than red. Uh, there's more red than I would like. Uh, we're, we're down 4% this year. I'm not happy about it. Uh, the market's up 6 and uh, so that's one twelfth of the year in the books, and I've got eleven months to, uh, 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 you know, come back and, and, and kick tail. I, I was up way too late last night going through my my uh, uh, charts, thousands of ETFs. I literally go through those every single month, often uh, more frequently than that. And um, you know what I see going on right now is the potential for bases, the potential for breakouts 
the potential for positive trend cases in a lot of things. You know, more bullish than than I have been. Again, we made money last year. We were up 6%. The market was down 19 I want to be up this year. That is my entire focus. And um, to that end, I go look at this and I say, I want to have the 10 best ETFs I can find out there while I go through the work in February to find, you know, the, the, the you know any new opportunities that my chart work suggests. And I have 11 names, and I go, so how do I cut it down to 10? Because I really want to have focus, and I don't want to become bloated. And uh, I looked at the ProShares SEF, uh, the, the Short Financials ETF, small position down 9%. And uh, the short real estate ETF, REK, down 9%. And I'd say, okay, uh, uh, the short financials was a smaller position. The relative strength was worse. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway and JP Morgan in there look a lot better to me than Prologis and, and uh, American Towers in the real estate sector. And it just makes more sense to me that I keep coming down to some basic things that if the Blackstone Real Estate Trust is having to curb redemptions and get money from, from uh, the California pension funds to, to, to bolster their real estate investments, I, I think uh, that some, if they've got a problem, everybody's got a problem, and I think real estate's coming down. So, again, if it's down 15%, I'm going to shoot it. But for right now, I'm letting the REK ride. I cut out the SEF. And so it takes us to up to 29% cash, which, again, the pros won't do. Uh, we are 26% short. And short means I'm, I'm in essence, uh, expecting prices of, of those stocks to go down. Those are the Kathy Wood stocks, the Coinbase's, the Tesla's, which have had big rallies, no question about it. I still think they're, they're going to reverse to the downside, but again, I've got a very short trigger. Then we're 45% long energy, platinum, Chinese web companies, the, the Argentinian stocks, which, again, there isn't a, a financial advisor out there that's going to come up with that portfolio uh, because they want to hug the index and not lose too much, I want to make money, and uh, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. So we're we're net long more than we have been, and we have that 29% cash. So that as my chart work says, we have to be invested in these other areas. Off I go. So that's how we're invested as of uh, today, February 1st. Please watch us during the uh, uh, on all social media during the week because as things change and I have uh, evidence that bolsters or you know chips away at my thesis, then I uh, I, I make some some changes. So well, let's get into this week's bakes takes. Uh, and I'm struck by this. This is from the Bear Traps Report by Larry McDonald, a great service. I really recommend it. And it, it simply shows the, the, uh, the, the S&P earnings scorecard. And the bottom line is that so far we've reported the worst EPS growth since the second quarter of uh, 2020. And that's when the economy was in the middle of COVID. So Earnings growth is expected to be down, you know, 4% this, this quarter, 4% in Q2. And I'm kind of with Mike Wilson and Morgan Stanley. This is why I say the market doesn't care what I think, but here's why I think what I think. That, okay, as Mike Wilson has said, sure, inflation's come down. Interest rates have come down. The Fed will, stop, will slow their rate of hikes and eventually stop. But now we're going to watch earnings come down. And when the, the, the profitability of American comp companies, period, starts coming down, these, these multiples aren't going to look that cheap, and we're going to take these stocks lower. That's what I think is going to happen. That's what I see in this earnings scorecard. But I am very attentive to things that are, uh, are uh, to, you know, evidence that the, the market gives me that I'm wrong in that case. So I'll be reporting back on this as we go. That's my take for this week. And uh, as we close out today's show, I always like to end with some much-needed levity. Uh, I thought this was new. It turns out it's four years old. 
but uh, I've got a soft spot in my heart for the comedy cellar in New York. When I go there to visit, when we go down there, my wife and, and, and Bobby go down to visit Jack. We go to the comedy cellar. Uh, it is always a hilarious time. Very enjoyable. I recommend it highly. Ray Romano uh, had a uh, return visit there that he put on a Netflix special. The link is in the uh, in the notes, and I really recommend it. It's very very funny. That's it for today's show. Please go to Bakes Take uh, sorry StockMarketAuthority.com and sign up for my free newsletter. Please send an email Bakes at StockMarketAuthority.com. I want to hear everything, good, bad, ugly, questions. I'll keep you anonymous if you'd like. DM me at Bakes Takes underscore, and uh, I hope you had fun. I'm having fun. And uh, it's good to be alive in America, folks. Keep smiling. See you. Bye. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.